Hi, and welcome to Wing Chun Traveler's Wing Chun Training Tips. Coming to you from beautiful Cuenca, Ecuador. Today again we're going to look at some solo training drills. And for today I have a punching drill progression for you. We'll start out with something basic and then keep building up more and more complex. To start out you just begin in your basic stance. And we are just going to punch from this position. So I'll do a few repetitions. You can go with me. Okay, that was 50 punches. When you do these, make sure that you always pull down the front hand a little bit, the front arm, and that the rear arm already wants to come forward to strike. So don't pull down and then start striking, <laughs> but it's a simultaneous motion. So the, the rear arm wants to come forward, already has some pressure, and then when the path is cleared, you complete that punch. Okay, so from this very basic one, and of course you can train this as much as you want, no? we're going to then shift our position lightly, just like we do in chunky, so that if you were to look at your belly button, your belly button would be 45 degrees shifted off the line right in front of you. However, my facing, where I'm looking, where my arms are pointing, is still in the same position. And my heels have not moved. Yeah? So I don't go leaning back or anything like this. All I do from here, slight shift. So you can use your position from serum tau from the beginning with your Wu Sao position. Just give a slight shift. And here your wrists shouldn't move sideways at all. Yeah? So they're still in the same position as before. Then from here, we're going to do the punch now. Same basic idea, but we use the hip to drive the punch. So from here, I sink my elbow, so it's in front of the hip. And with the rotation of the hip, that pushes my, my punch forwards. I'll do it again from this angle so you can probably see it better. Okay, also when you do the punch, make sure that your wrist is nice and loose so that there is a snap in the wrist when you punch. And this is not something that I do with my wrist on purpose. This is the inertia huh, of the wrist that propel the elbow and the wrist snaps into place by itself. Okay, so it's here. Make sure that you have a little bit of snap, okay? So, in this drill, it's already a lot more to coordinate. Yeah? So, important here is that your idea of the center that you set out in serum tau, this line, that that does not change just because I'm turning. I'm not turning over there, and then turning over there, and then turning over there. 
You could also drill like this. Then I say my opponent moves, so now he's here, and now he's over there. This is kind of like what you have in chunk you, this drill. But for the basic drill, when we punch, when we rotate our hip, we want to train exactly to have the punch end in the same position as it would without the turning. It's very important. Yeah? And in the beginning, normally, people would tend to overshoot. Instead of hitting that same point in space that you've been training here in Sinem Tower for a long time, yeah? once the body starts rotating, the punches go all over the place. So the whole point of the drill is to be able to perform your techniques, the motions, using the same angles, the same paths, the same lines that you already know, with just the added benefit of getting the hip behind the punch. So you do that, slowly, nice and steady, making sure that your wrists are in the right position. If you are not sure, you can just return to this Sinum Tao starting position. And so you will know the, where the wrists have to be, huh? so on this line. Hola. Okay. Hola, how is this? So then, now it's already a more interesting punching drill because we have a hit, which we always need for a real punch. But I'm still standing in this really uh, yeah, laboratory kind of stance. No, nobody stands like this when they fight. So what we can do to make the whole thing a little more interesting is that we put one leg in front of the other. And if you look at the stance that I had before, standing like this, I can also do the same stance. So if you imagine... Here will be my Sinum Tau stance. Now I said, okay, I'm a little bit turned, but I'm punching this way with rotation. Actually, I'm in the same stance now. One leg in the front, one leg in the back. And from here again, I can train my punch. Yeah, so there's just a little bit of rotation here. You can see that now I'm completely square. Now I'm slightly rotated. So these little 45 degree turns, is what's left of the U-chip rotation that we trade in chunk you. Yeah, so from this now we learned early in the beginning that this rotation drives the punch, right? But it's not practical to rotate that much, so big, huh? back and forth. So in the end, what's left is this. Okay, you put one leg in the front in your basic stance that you know from chum cue, for example, where you're here like this, or from punzo uh, when you step in like this, okay? One leg in the front, and here, concentrate now on the small rotation of the hip. And now, uh, there's something that makes this whole thing a little bit more complicated because in the beginning you learn the punch like this, right? You stretch the arm out and then you return. But in reality, or as you progress in your training, when we punch, I want my arm to automatically snap back into my Wusa position. So we don't have that point where my arm is long and extended and then comes back. Yeah, it's immediate, 
snapping back into the Wu Cell position. And this is what we have in the beginning of the form, very first motion. This is my punch. Yeah? Symbolizes my punch and it goes back to my Wu Cell position. Once you start bringing in the hip, it will be a lot easier to get the snapping of the arm, the snapping back into the Wu Cell position. Because there's just a lot more energy in the motion and that causes your arm to then recoil, snap back into this position. Okay? So this is another nice detail that you can train for, that your arm comes back into a wusa. Here you can see how Wing Chun is a bit different from, let's say, Western boxing, at least modern Western boxing, where the, the fist comes from all the way back and returns all the way back. Yeah? So if you punch twice, it's also coordinated. Yeah? But Wing Chun is not like this. We punch and we stay far, far from our body. Yeah? Because we try to use this front arm as a shield to catch any incoming energy. Okay. So once you've done the stationary punching like this, and then rotating punches like this, and then the small rotation, that's actually the most practical and how that looks outside of the laboratory, so to say. And of course you can also start doing the punches with steps. Or you can also start with the steps, do the rotations later, that's up to you. Um, so for that, I'll stand like this so you can see it well. I'm here, and I'm just going to step like this. Just like we have in Champio. Huh? And now I'm going to throw my, the front arm is going to punch first. And right as my foot plants, I'm going to make the first punch, okay? So, and notice that doesn't really matter which arm is in the front, so if this arm is in the front and I step, the timing, the rhythm is still the same. Yeah? Of course you also, you have a rotation, so when I step down here, there's a rotation. When I step here, there's a rotation from the hip. So that would be a simple drill with stepping and punching combined. We could also do one even simpler drill where I practice to throw the punch when the rear leg plants. And then this is exactly like Chunkyu. Well, of course, in Chunkyu, if I do a bong here or a punch, or jut punch, doesn't matter, no? The form gives me a framework, but the individual technique here, that bongs up, it's not the point, okay? So if you find this difficult, just train this. Huh? If you train this for a good amount of time, you start to feel really comfortable with these short steps and coordinated punches. You can crank up the level a little bit by doing three punches. So for three, you would still do the first one now. Then the second on the the second on the turning of the hip and the third 
as the rear leg comes in. Okay, so this is quite challenging already. You have to have pretty quick punches already. You have to be pretty relaxed for that. Your stepping has to work, everything has to come together, no? But it's good to train this, this triple rhythm, triple rhythm of the punch with the, with the steps and the hip. It's very good drill, huh? You can also do this going backwards. So, you punch, 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 punch. And the second one comes on the stepping of the rear foot backwards. And then the third one comes as the front leg retreats. Let's do two at first. So I stand like this, I'm facing this way. And I go one, two. kind of like when you go, when you're in your fuck and you step out, you're in punza, right? Okay? And as you can already see, if I do this, there would still be a little bit of timing that I can use to throw a first punch like this, kind of like a jab, huh? Because now I'm moving backwards, might as well interrupt the guy and cover my retreat a little bit, yeah? And here I have a nice hip, nice hip rotation. And here again, okay? Okay, so that's the basis for taking your basic punch from here through a progression of steps, including your hip rotation that we train, including the steps that we train, and increasing the frequency of the punch to come to something that is going to be much more useful when you go to sparring or any kind of real fighting context. You know, a lot of the times people they have only seen the Sinum Tau, yeah? maybe a bit of Poon Tau, they don't understand what's the point, you know? Who stands like this when they're fighting? So you gotta understand these are all just building blocks small and uh, isolated pieces that we break apart and look at in detail but then you have to put everything back together and that doesn't look like standing in Sinium Tao or Rune Punza, okay? Although the individual elements, they should still be recognizably the same.